Greetings psychology students slash teachers. Before we get into the specifics of the three types of recall, let's just be mindful that recall is just one method of retrieval. So defining recall, it's a method of retrieval that involves tapping into material stored in the passive LTM and putting it back into your conscious STM for use. And when we compare recall to other methods of retrieval, particularly rec um, recognition, we tend to perform relatively poorly because of the lack of cues. The exception to that rule is if we are using cued recall. So in order to both illustrate and differentiate between the three types of recall, I'm going to use the example of Australian Prime Ministers. So international viewers, apologies for you having uh, no So in order to illustrate and differentiate between the three types of recall, I'm going to use the example of Australian Prime Ministers. So international view viewers, I apologise um, for picking content that is culturally biased. You might have to come up with your own uh, examples to get your head around this uh, that's more localised. So the first type is free recall, where we simply ask people to retrieve information from their passive LTM and put it back into their conscious STM without giving them any cues and without worrying about any type of serial order. So name every one of the 30 Prime Ministers that we've had since Federation. The second type is serial recall. So this time we're asking people to retrieve information from their LTM and put it back into the STM in some type of serial order. Now we could do that chronologically with the Prime Ministers, by asking people to go back to 1901 and name Australia's first Prime Minister, Edmund Barton, the second one, Alfred Deakin, and so on. The third type is queued recall. So this time we're asking people to retrieve information from their LTM, but we're giving them cues to assist that mechanism. Now it's different from recognition. Recognition is where we give you alternatives. We're giving things like initials. So from this list of initials, name every Prime Minister um, that you can actually retrieve from your LTM back into your SDM. And we're going to tend to do a bit better on queued recall because of the, of the assistance of those cues. Now, in my opinion, the best way for students to consolidate their understanding of the three types of recall is to do a class experiment. So if that interests you, continue viewing. If not, hit stop, move on. So my experiment is going to involve elements of the, of the periodic table. So what I would do is basically flash the whole periodic table like I've got here on, onto a screen and, uh, and just ask students to, to view it and just to be mindful of the different types of elements, etc., the organisation of the periodic table. And then I'd tell them in advance, I'm going to um, ask you a question. Now, before we get there, we need to allocate the students into three types of groups. We could do that non-randomly by just doing it row by row, or we could do it randomly where we put names in hats or some other technique, and we come up with three separate groups, a free recall group, a serial recall group, and a queued recall group. So we have no control condition here. The independent variable is what type of recall method we're doing, and the DV, you'll find out shortly. At this point of the experiment, I would encourage teachers to give each of the participants a recording sheet and then instruct each of the groups as follows. Group one, their task is to identify as many of the 14 elements on the periodic table that are represented by one letter symbols in any order they wish. Group two is doing a similar task, but they must record the elements ordered based on their atomic number Group three, they're given cues such as the atomic number and the symbol, and they need to record those elements next to the appropriate atomic number slash symbol. So then once the three groups have completed the task, then we need to calculate our DV, which is for each of the three groups, the number of elements that have been correctly identified. But for the free and queued recall, it's just simply how many of the elements they've successfully identified. And for the serial recall group, they have to do two things. They have to identify the element and also get the element in the correct order according to the atomic number. So if it's in the wrong order, 
they don't get credit for it successfully identifying that. So if we had a, a nice large sample size um, and we can control participant related variables, then we'd expect results such as this. We'd expect the queued recall group to have the highest rate of recall because those queues have helped um, access that material from LTM. We'd expect the serial group to be the worst because even though they're probably going to be able to recall a similar number of elements as the free recall group, they might struggle with the order in terms of the periodic table. 